Hello, welcome to Dr. Boyson's Reality Check. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and then click on the notification so that we can send you videos as and when we load. Topic three on occupational health and safety is risk assessment process. Now, what is risk assessment process? Essentially, risk assessment process is a holistic examination of what in the organization and workplace could cause possible harm to people and so that they can weigh up uh, whether enough precautions have been taken to deal with this. Uh, in, another, in other words, it's a cheap and effective measure to ensure that the most valuable asset, that is the workforce, are protected uh, in the organization. Um, another school of thought things that is a thorough risk, uh, uh, is a thorough assessment of the foundation of all loss prevention and risk management program in the organization. So we are talking about a holistic, I mean, review, examination, evaluation of the workplace and the workers themselves to to see if there's any potential risk that can fall the cause. Uh, some sort of hazard, I mean, to workers, potential hazard that can cause some risk to workers. So risk assessment should be done for the organization as a whole and then individually for all facilities where the workers are working, their work environment, the tools they use to work, everything should be evaluated. So some of the questions that will, will be posed during the risk assessment of an organization should answer is what are the threats and the hazards? What are the threats and hazards and what is the probability of occurrence of these threats occurring? Who is at risk? How vulnerable are people? What are the potential consequences? How would emergency response business continuity and crisis management plans respond to these threats? And what insurance or finance is in place to mitigate the financial impact of any losses? These questions should be asked, I mean, by should be answered by the organization. And it's also the responsibility of all risk managers and supervisors to ensure that the health and safety policy is fully implemented in their areas of control and to consult with staff as part of undertaking the hazard identification, risk assessment, and control process. So three key things that managers and supervisors should ensure that workers, they together with workers or employees, will do the hazard identification risk assessment and control process. And it is the responsibility of the staff to cooperate, to comply with this policy. Remember, we did say that uh, when we talk about risks in an organization, it's a dual I mean, responsibility, that of the employee and the employer. So what is the risk assessment process? Basically, we have five steps. The first one is to identify the hazard. The second is to assess the risks. <clears throat> the third is to evaluate the existing control controls the, the fourth is to implement additional risks controls then we have monitor and review so after identification a risk assessment is done an evaluation of the existing control to mitigate the risks or to to avoid the risk of being happening and then we implement additional um, uh, risk control measures if the existing ones fall short of what is supposed to do and then monitor and do additional reviews so for the identification process, the first thing is hazard identification. So we're saying that hazard identification is a process of examining each work area for the purpose of finding out hazard inherent in the job. Work areas include, but are not limited to machine workshop, laboratories, office areas. We have talked about this. Health and safety legislation requires that employers in consultation with employees identify all hazard situation which could result in any person in the workplace being harmed. And the hazard identification process requires that first, the past accidents and incidents uh, will be examined to see whether um, this thing has happened and whether the incident or accident could also happen again. Employees should also be con consulted to find out whether they, cons what they con to, for them to ascertain what they consider as safety issues. Of course, it's, it, you need to deal with employees. They are working with the environment and they know how some of these things cause, I mean, poses stress to them. So it's important to find out from employees. The, the, the managers and supervisors shouldn't sit and imagine what could cause, I mean, hazard or risk to their employees. They should work in hand with employees to achieve that. Work areas or work site 
be examined to find out what is happening. That's also very important. Information about equipment and uh, its instruction and safety data sheet must be reviewed to see whether what is said about the safety precaution are being practiced and any hazard which is identified by this process should be recorded in the risk ass assessment and control sheet in each area so that we have these things documented to serve as uh, a means of controlling the risk. The, the, the second step is to uh, do risk assessment. What we are saying is that identifying who is at risk is an important aspect of risk assessment process and it starts with the employees Employers must also assess the risks faced by agencies and to contrast staff, visitors, clients, and all and all others who may require their services. In some areas, like the mining, uh, the, the mining sites, and when you go to the mines, before you enter, they will give you some pep talks about, I mean, areas that you are not supposed to pass. They will give you your PPEs and other things. Uh, visitors who are entering are given education as to what to do and what not to do. So these are examples of the fact that visitors and clients who and others who may require the service of an organization are given that <coughs> pep talks to ensure that uh, they, they are not exposed to these hazards and, and risk assessment involves considering the possible uh, results of someone being exposed to a hazard and the likelihood of this occurring. And risk assessment assists also in in determining the severity of the risk, that is one, whether existing control measures are effective to which actions should be further taken to control the risks and how agent the actions needs to be taken. And risk assessment therefore should include one identifying factors that may be contributing to the risks and then review the health and safety information, especially from an authoritative source and its relevance to a particular hazard and also evaluating how uh, severe the harm could uh, B. This includes looking at the types of injuries, illness, and, and all that that can result from the hazard. A number of people exposed, possibly um, those in the chain effect from exposure to these hazards. And then the fourth one is to evaluate evaluation of how the hazard may cause this harm, also determining the likelihood of, of the harm occurring, and then the, the, also identifying the actions necessary to eliminate or control the risks. Also, you keep records of the actions, that is the records must be used as a benchmark for subsequent what actions. So the process of uh, um, I mean, assessing the risks is undertaken by reviewing any available information about the hazard. It could be legislation, it could be law, code of practice or whatever. And by using your personal work experience about what sort of accident or illness the hazard would create, and how likely this will happen. When assessing the intensity and severity of the risk, the following factors are considered. One, how often are people exposed? We are talking about the frequency. How, how long are they exposed? We are talking about the duration. And how many people are exposed? We are talking about the number. So managers and supervisors have to identify hazard, assess the risk or illness which has of care, and set the priority for corrective action by using clearly laid down process. And this process requires that the identified hazard and uh, uh, the identified hazard are placed on the risk assessment and control form. And a category table is also used to categorize the type of risks and its nature. So this is an example of a, a risk description where you have the hazard category and the description. For instance, we have to can talk about physical hazard. We are saying that these are little electromagnetic waves, high exposure to sunlight, ultraviolet, I mean, rays, extreme uh, temperatures. When we were talking about risks, we made mention of this category of risks, uh, biological hazards, physical hazard, electro, uh, <coughs> uh, ergonometric hazards, chemical hazards, work hazard, etc. So this is a table categorizing the risks and giving description of what the risks is important. We know how the risks is defined. This is the description. So we will be able to identify which one is which. And then there's an, uh, uh, another risk description where we have the risk category. This one was hazard category. This is risk category and the description whether the risk is legal, financial, behavioral, um, environmental, or organizational. We had also talked about this in topic one. And then risk description, now we're talking about the consequences and how the severity 
of it. So whether it is catastrophic, whether it is major, moderate, minor, and insignificant. And in each case, we give the description to show which of the consequences, I mean, is high or low or that. For instance, catastrophic, we are saying that death or permanent disability. Major, we're saying serious injury, hospital treatment, I mean, required and all that. Then also the frequency of risks. Here we have the likelihood and how likely are the consequences. So we have setting to occur very likely, possible, unlikely, and then we have this description of these ones. So setting to occur, we are saying that it's expected to occur in most circumstances. And then risk level and action needed. So we're able to identify the risk level and the action needed. If it is critical, we are saying that immediate action is needed. If it is high, we're saying that action needed quickly. That is within one or two days. The moderate action required one week or to eliminate or minimize the risks and low action required within a reasonable time frame. And then very low, um, also we know the action that is required. So at the end of the day, we are also able to identify the levels of risks. And here we have the consequences, that is the effect, how rare the weight risks is, how unlikely that the risks will happen, how possible, how very likely, and how certain to uh, the risks can occur. And this measures the level of risk, that's the likelihood. So if it is cat cat catastrophic, for instance, we're saying that it is moderate, that is, is the reality, and then we're saying that it is also moderate when it comes to what it unlikeliness uh, or uh, how unlikely the risks would happen. And if it is possible, we say it is high. These are examples of, of the risks levels and uh, metrics that an organization can use. So we're saying that essential organization going through the risks assessment process should identify all of these should be able to look at the risk hazard description, should be able to do look at the risk description, the, um, the consequences and how the risk can, can, could also hurt someone. You should also look at the frequency of its occurrence and the, the, the risk level and actions that are needed and also to look at the likelihood. Thank you very much for I mean, listening to this and then watching this video and subscribe to Dr. Uh, Boyson's reality check and then don't forget to click on the not notification so that we can send you videos as and when you need them or as and when we post them. We'll be treating topic five very soon. Stay tuned.